SpaceX, Starlink put satellite TV providers out of business. Let's go talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today, we have a little bit of Dark Temptation, the new blend, so good, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We're gonna be talking about SpaceX Starlink and how I feel that they are putting out of business a lot of these satellite providers. We see, as of today, a merger that is just about ready to happen between Echo Star and Dish Network. Now, I've had many years with Dish Network and way back to, I guess, 24 months ago when I got SpaceX Starlink, I told you about that. And I'll get into that a little bit before the end of this video, but I was reading an article over on, I think it was Space News, a couple of articles, different places, and I want to share some of it with you because I found it very fascinating, very interesting on in what's going on. And maybe you will too. So when we're done going through this, I'll give you my commentary. But as I always say, most importantly, I want to hear your thoughts down below. What do you think about all of this going on? But before I get into it, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out. Go to jcristina.com forward slash books. If you enjoy this content, even in the least, throw it a thumbs up. That'll be very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. If you are subscribed, click this little button. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And if you want to say thank you, there's a little thank you button. You can click on that. Give a dollar or two if you like. If not, don't. It's fine too. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you're looking for a VPN, look no further. Check out Pure VPN. The nice folks over there gave us a promo code, jchristina. If you don't want to use that promo code, that's fine. Use jchristina.com forward slash VPN, and you will get 15 additional percent off at checkout. Let's get right into this article. It starts out by saying satellite TV broadcaster and terrestrial wireless operator Dish Network and Echo Star, its sister company focused on broadband services from space, have cleared a key regulatory hurdle for their merger plans. The Federal Communication Commission, or the FCC, gave its blessing on December 6th to transfer all of Dish Network's licenses and authorizations to Echo Star, which would be the surviving entity following the transaction. Dish Network is going out of business. It's basically merging with Echo Star. That's the end of it. The approval is one of the final conditions needed to complete a merger announced around four months ago. It was said that this move would put the combining of the two companies already controlled by billionaire Charlie Urgen closer to the finish line. The merger could be wrapped up as soon as this week or could be pushed back to the end of this year to simplify accounting work. Eric Carlson resigned as chief executive of Dish Network last month to make way for Echo Star's CEO. Dish Network split from Echo Star in 2008 to expand its terrestrial mobile service and online streaming as the satellite TV business started to lose ground to cable competitors. That was definitely the case in 2008. It has changed. The landscape has changed as of today. So you could think of Dish Network as the service company, whereas Echo Star is more like the technology company, the one that's like building the satellites, all right? So anyways, the article continues. The company has been heavily investing in rolling out 5G networks across the United States to diversify revenues amid strained financial resources. Yes, I've talked about this in past videos where we see them fighting tooth and nail with SpaceX Starlink over Spectrum and how SpaceX Starlink is going to be stepping on their 5G. And it's a whole big problem and a thing. Whereas they had this Spectrum for years and years and years and years. And now all of a sudden the writing's on the wall that their company is going out of business and now they're trying to jump into 5G. <sighs> And I don't know if it's going to work, guys. I don't know if it's going to work. But anyways, we'll talk about that in just a second. Meanwhile, Echo Star has access to over $2 billion in cash reserves and expects an uptick in broadband subscribers once Jupiter 3, the world's heaviest commercial communication satellite, comes online 
next week. Charles Ergen would own more than 90% of the voting stock and about 54% of the equity of the recombined group the FCC said in a public notice. Therefore, the regulator said there would not be a substantial change of ownership or control of Dish Network's licenses and authorizations following the deal. Basically, this is why we can make it happen. So, you know, when we look at this, I mean, this is just, this has been writing on the wall forever, absolutely forever. And by them saying that the reason of their dropping, let's say, sales or customers being the cable companies. Yes, that was the case in 2008. Cable and fiber was really taking hold and a lot of the people out there were starting to get cable in their homes and even fiber in their homes and they didn't need companies like DirecTV or Dish Network any longer. So that was then. This is now. Now we're seeing SpaceX Starlink basically ubiquitous now. It is everywhere. You don't have a waiting list any longer. Anywhere in the United States, you can get it in many parts in the world. So the idea of servicing the rural customers that do not have cable available to them, because that's exactly what DirecTV did as well as Dish Network. The whole idea that Elon Musk had with SpaceX Starlink, bridging the digital divide, the divide between the haves and the have-nots, the people that had high-speed internet access and the people that did not, that is what ended up happening. That divide has been bridged as of this point. So they no longer, or people no longer need Dish Network. They just simply don't. Today, if you have high-speed internet access, if it's cable or fiber or even Starlink, well, you can get IPTV, right? You can have YouTube, you can have Hulu or FUBU or Philo or anything like that. You could do even Amazon with a fire stick and get a ton of free TV over your internet. And you could do it cheaply. I mean, a fire stick is like, what, 39 bucks or something? You don't need to get an Apple TV like this one that I'm going to be talking about probably in the video or two from now. I haven't even open it yet. Anyways, you don't need one of these expensive things. You can literally get a Fire Stick for 30 bucks when they're on sale. So having this access, having this availability, being able then to choose the channels that you want, HBO, Peacock, Paramount, ESPN, Netflix, Prime through Amazon, Disney Plus, maybe not Disney Plus. Yeah, it, there's been too many people that I've seen online that have been just boycotting Disney because they took their kids into the Magic Kingdom here in Florida and found some guy dressed up like Cinderella with a full face of makeup and a menage. And then they had to explain it to their kids. Why is this guy dressed up like Cinderella? And they don't want to explain it to their kids, so they're boycotting Disney. I guess you can't blame them. The times we live in, just f***ed up. On a side note about the Magic Kingdom, to stay in any Magic Kingdom property today, I did just research it when we went on our anniversary, my wife and I, it was going to be over $3,000 to stay on property at a hotel. It could be one of the, the Polynesian or any of them. Like three over $3,000 just to stay there for three nights and get a couple of tickets. That's it. I'm like, holy hell. I mean, it's just astronomical. And the reason being is they don't have as many people going. So what are they going to do? They have to keep on upping the price. Anyways, I digress. You know, the idea here of them stealing from the underserved and I've talked about this on many videos, right? Where these companies just take advantage. We're talking right now about Dish Network and of course, DirecTV. They take advantage of the underserved, right? Well, AT&T does the same thing. All of these providers do. But these people have been doing it for so long and making billions, billions, but now that people have access to fiber and cable and Starlink and other means of getting high-speed internet access and have IPTV, they don't need them anymore. And they're giving Dish Network the one-finger salute. 
I can tell you when I got SpaceX Starlink 24 months ago, now like 25 months ago, all right? I also got YouTube TV. And I waited about a month and I tested it out to make sure that this thing is gonna actually be able to service all of our TVs in the home, see if it would work. And it did work. So I called up Dish Network and what did I do? I gave him the one finger salute. I told him to go pound sand. And I was with them for 21 years. And the bill started out at about 49 to $54, went up to 69, 79, 89, 99. I'm like, holy, sh we're gonna hit 100. We did, 100, 110, 120. The time I left, it was 150 some, 160 some dollars per month per month robbery and that's what they did so now they can see the writing is on the wall the people are leaving they're losing customers by the droves and that's great i think it's awesome absolutely awesome once again i do believe the catalyst in 2008 was the cable and fiber companies but as of today the nail in the coffin is elon musk spacex starlink bridging the digital divide giving us in the rural areas the same type of treatment as people that are in the city, which is amazing, absolutely amazing. Trust me, if you never had high-speed internet access and you get SpaceX Starlink and now you do have high-speed, it is life-changing. You ask anybody that has SpaceX Starlink, they'll tell you the exact same thing. It is life-changing. Now, by them recombining what they split apart before to try to save Dish Network because service is dead, whereas the technology is still alive, how long is that going to last? I think there's going to be a ton of layoffs to happen once the merger happens because a ton of the people that are at Dish Network don't need to be there anymore, all right? And the CEO of the company will be the Echo Star CEO because the Dish Network CEO is gone. Anyways, guys, what do you think about all this? Do you have fiber? Do you have cable? Do you have Starlink? Which one do you have? And do you also have Dish Network or DirecTV? Or did you ditch them when you got Starlink or any other internet, high-speed internet provision? I would love to know. Down below, let's have this discussion. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, throw it a thumbs up. That'll be very helpful. And if you want more Starlink coverage, I have about 200 plus videos in a playlist right about here. Go check it out when you're done watching this video. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've made for you, as well as tees and merch and all kinds of other stuff. Check all that merchandise out. And if there's something that you like, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.